You join me on a glorious sunny day, and according to the guys at the Met Office, we're going to reach low to mid 20s in the next few days. So, carry on with the seed sowing. Well, we've been treated to this rare display of sunshine. I thought I'd do a bit of al fresco sewing. <laughs> yeah. I've got a mushroom tray here. Because the beds isn't quite ready yet for sowing my salad crops, I'm going to be sowing this uh, French breakfast radish. So I've uh, just filled the soil up there. That I'm just using the normal Wix's compost in this. And what I'll do, I'll put about three ridges down the middle, sow the seed in, and give it a good water. So all that's left now is just to pinch the soil together. And that's it. Done. One of my regular subscribers, David, over at DTCB67, Got in touch with me and asked me if I'd be interested in trying any of his spare pea beans. Well, of course I said yes, but these are something totally new to me, so I'll be looking for a bit of help. These are the beans in question, and as I said before, this is all totally new to me. I've never ever grown these before. So, uh, in the comments, you could let me know if you've grown them, how did you grow them, and how did you get on? How did you cook them, like a normal broad bean, or and even storage so anything at all will be greatly received that's the trouble with this weather you can just sit and enjoy the sun but we've got some seeds still to sow so we better crack on i'm going to be sowing some japanese bunching onions called ishikura i normally grow these every year and as usual i'll be growing them in these cell trays these are normally 84 cell trays 12 by 7 but as the end cell gets broken I tend to chop them up into more manageable sizes like the 12 cell I use for my spring onions and the bunching onions and I also got some 9 cells that I use for doing the lettuce in. Do I need to remind you of the compost I'm using? I doubt it. Just put a little depression with your fingers into the top of the soil and then I sow about 10 seeds in each hole and then plant the whole bunch in the soil. That's another one put to bed. Now we've got some uh, spring onions, white Lisbon to sow and they'll do those in exactly the same way. Well, we're coming to the end of what has been a really glorious day and the bonus is the forecasts for the next three days is similar or even better. We've got quite a lot done today, sowing wise, and I'll just show you what we've done. These are the sowings that we've done today. We've got the beetroot bolt hardy. The other side of that is the Ishikura Japanese bunching onion. Moving back a bit, we've got the lettuce little gem. And on this side, another lettuce that's called Webbed Wonderful. And right on the front here, we have the spring onion, the white Lisbon. Plus, of course, the uh, radish, which you saw French breakfast earlier on. So I'm just going to stack them on top of each other and put them in the greenhouse. And then tomorrow, who knows what we'll be doing. Good morning. You join me on what appears to be a quite a nice morning, I think. We had a glorious weekend. It was, in fact, it was shorts and t-shirt weather. However, yesterday, it was a bit more of a shock as it we dropped away about 10 degrees again. Uh, I spent most of the weekend helping a couple of other plot holders, Julia and Vicky, construct the greenhouse. And uh, it's one that I donated to them probably uh, late last year. It's got quite a bit of glass missing. Anyway, in the meantime, they've dug up quite a piece of tough ground. They've laid all the base down themselves, the slabs. Then I give them a help constructing the green air space and the frame and the weekend we actually put polycarp sheets in I'll just show you as 
can see it's a uh, all polycarp sheet, four mil. Um, originally, I was thinking about putting glass in, but the cost of the glass was quite expensive, and also the uh, polycarp you could actually buy it in pre-cut size, so the majority of this actually slotted into the frames. We've uh, put the used glazers, double-sided sponge tape for the sticking the polycarb into the frames and also glazing W clips as well and it's made it really firm. The uh, base is actually constructed from builders scaffold planks and I can highly recommend using these because it raises the green up, greenhouse up by about 10 to 12 inches which is quite a lot actually. The, I mean this, the eaves of this now is quite high and what we also did after we put that down was to bolt the frame to the actual slabs underneath so that, that's going nowhere then what we've done in the meantime also is drill through the frame all the way around various places so the frame is secured to the base the greenhouse didn't come in originally with the window but uh, I had a quick phone call to my mate who's got double glazing business and uh, asked him to keep his eye out and a few days later this thing come along and uh, it's slightly bigger than we needed but we could easily adapt the frame and it's a fantastic opener it, it opens probably oh probably a foot or something it's, it's massive I'll just take down the outside and the only thing you have to do really is move that glazing bar along probably two or three inches which was no issue at all as you say it fits in quite nicely and uh, I think the girls are going to get a, an auto vent and that'll be fitted a bit later on. At the moment the door's just hanging on the top rollers the bottom's flapping at the moment. I ain't, I ain't fixed the bottom securing roll yet but I want to clean that so it's easy to clean it with the door off and uh, it won't take long to refit that. As I said in the previous video this bed here, the two of them are going to be the onion bed along with the garlic one at the bottom. Um, very imminently I'm going to be running the rotavator over this. You may recall during the autumn last year we uh, top dressed this with those in there and covered it in black polythene. Well I'm going to get the right fighter just to till it in and I'll leave it for a week or so to settle before we plant the onion sets out. So in the meantime I'm going to actually get the onion sets going now in salt rays. I'm just about to start uh, planting the onion mm -hmm. sets and uh, I've done them in these 24 salt trays. I've got three varieties and I'll probably do two trays for each variety if that's if I've got enough sets. Uh, the compost I'm using is uh, clover with uh, vermiculite added. And I've also added a little sprinkling of uh, charge as well, ecothrive charging. This is the first variety of onion set I'll be planting. And these ones are called fenerly. Like with all bulbs or sets or anything, always check the firmness of the bulb before you plant it and discard any which feel a bit squidgy. That's the first row planted. I do tend to plant my sets a little bit deeper than some people. I know some people just rest the set on top of the soil basically. But uh, I think that gives the onion a bit more stability and when I plant out, I'll plant it maybe even a little bit deeper as well. So that's the first six done of this tray. I'll carry on and plant all the rest up. I won't bore you with that. And I'll come back to you when I've finished. That's the first tray done. I'll just put them into a little soaking bath now just to dampen the soil underneath them and once all these are done I'll put them into the greenhouse on the allotment and just let them take off from there. That's the first tray of the red fen which is I'll just give them a soak because I'm just draining now. just occurred to me while I was doing that to uh, just show you the, these are the actual heat treated onion sets from last year and uh, as you can see there's I've just been left in the greenhouse all over winter and I'm still really, really firm. And uh, these are the red ones here. So uh, I can really highly recommend these. They, they do store quite well and so I didn't have any belt at all. I'll just show you the beds of the asparagus. Anyway, every plant now I can see evidence of where it's taken. And uh, there's quite a few big spears. But about four or five off so far and I'm not going to take much more say this is only the second year so hopefully next year they'll be in full production it's Easter bank holiday Monday and uh, Easter Sunday started off
promising with the sunshine out. However, that was quickly passed and the dark clouds came over and it was miserable all day. I spent quite a few hours in the greenhouse yesterday potting stuff on, which I'll show in a minute. And uh, then the afternoon was lazing around and ended up watching the Formula One motor racing. We've had a bit of rain overnight, but it's nothing to shout about. It's not really wet in the ground. It's just this drizzle stuff, which is uncomfortable to work in, but not doing the ground any good. Uh, I'll just have a quick look around this greenhouse on the allotment, then I'll take you into the greenhouse in the garden. The first early potatoes, as you can see, are doing extremely well. In fact, I could do with getting those out, but I think we've got a frost forecast the next day or two, so I'll, I'll leave them in here as long as I can. Still no sign of movement on the uh, heat-treated onion sets yet, but they've only been in five or six days, so I can't expect no more than that. These are the uh, Swede, the Tweed F1. They're doing quite well. These are the sunflowers, which are going to be part of the uh, the sunflower challenge, and uh, they're doing very well. In fact, might need potting on probably the end of this week. Moving on down. As you can see, the, the peas are screaming to get out the uh, giving the max is starting to twine into each other, so I'll have to watch that. Looking at the carrot box, I've had a few misfires on the sweet candles, so on the empty stations I'll probably be putting a few more seeds in, and also I'll be thinning out the ones where there's uh, germinated two or three. I'm in the greenhouse in the garden now, and as I said, I spent a few hours in there yesterday potting on. I'll just show you what I've done. These are the Killerton cabbage and, cl and Clapton cauliflowers I've potted on. Um, some more Crimson Crush off sown. I've decided I was going to uh, increase the stock outside. The flavour is that good on there. Um, these there, you may recall, was the packet of seeds out from Heinz tomatoes. Uh, they uh, feel, well, germinated quite well. In the back there, uh, What's that? That's uh, some spring onion. And underneath, I find these trays quite good. These blue mushroom trays stacking because I've got some seeds. I don't know if you can sell them in there. Sell trays of spring onion and also have some lettuce going. Moving around, I've got uh, some peppers, various peppers going on. Some more tomatoes. Around the back is the, the cucumbers. Them seem to be doing well. Right over the far side there is the... Um, Banana shallots, the ears are brown, and there's some more there. Um, rainbow blend on the end, tomatoes. I've sown some more of those as well because I had some of those damp off, and uh, I've sown some more, and they seem to be going quite well. This is the uh, Latham self blanching celery, and as you can see, the germination is quite good on there. Well, I'll, do, I'll just leave these in the pot until they're about two or three inches high. And then I'll, I'll prick them out, and uh, that's the way I do it every year, and I always have good success that way. It's time to get the sweet corn on the go now. The variety I'm growing this year, and it's more or less the same every year, is a variety called Lark, although in the past I've grown one called Swift as well. I noticed that uh, Sean Cameron had, had decided to grow this variety, and uh, in the past years I've grown this, I've had a very, very good success rate with it. But as usual, like the peas and that, I tend to soak my sweet corn overnight in water before I plant out, and that'll be done again in root trainers. That's the seed, and roughly counting them, there's about 30. I'll grow mine in six block of six, so I'll need to get another packet on the go. To save opening another packet, I'd uh, luckily found a, a packet of browns that I opened last year. And I've still got some left. So I've put about 50 seeds in there, helping for at least 36 germination. And I say they'll be going in the root trainers tomorrow. 